Once you've loaded your source in Handbrake, you should consider some general output options. These options don't deal directly with the video, audio, or subtitles, but rather the file which will hold that content. These files are called containers. Handbrake can create two types of containers. The default is MP4. This is a container format designed specifically for MPEG-4 video. The other option is MKV, which is the container used for Matroska files. The Matroska format isn't tied to any particular video or audio standard, but is instead intended to be a universal file format for multimedia files. In order to decide which type of file you wish to create, you'll need to consider a number of factors. The primary one should be the device you're using to play it. Both MP4 and MKV files are compatible with computer playback on pretty much any operating system. But devices like DVD and Blu-ray players, portable media players like the iPod, and mobile phones are a different story. Playback of MP4 files is supported by nearly any device capable of playing MPEG-4 video, but only a small number of hardware players support MKV currently. Although MKV support is slowly spreading in the consumer electronics industry, some vendors may never add it to their devices. Apple, in particular, isn't going to be jumping on the Matroska bandwagon any time in the foreseeable future. If you want maximum compatibility with hardware players, MP4 is the way to go. If you've determined both MP4 and MKV files are viable options, it's mostly a question of personal preference. However, there are also some audio and subtitle format considerations. On the audio side, you'll need to use the MKV container if you want to include DTS audio in your video. Since Handbrake doesn't have its own DTS encoder, this will only be an issue if there is a DTS track in your source. If you want to keep subtitles from your source, you may or may not need to use MKV output. There are two basic types of subtitles, text-based and graphics-based. DVDs use a graphics-based format often referred to as Bob Sub. Each subtitle is literally an image which can be displayed on top of the video during playback. These are incompatible with MP4 files, although they can be burned into the video, making them a permanent part of the picture. Closed captions, including those found on DVDs, and SRT subtitles are text-based. These can be added to either MP4 or MKV files. For creating MP4 files, there are a few more options you should consider. iPod 5G support should be self-explanatory. If you're going to play your output on a fifth generation iPod, check this. Otherwise, it's not necessary. If you're encoding your video to H.264, which is the default in Handbrake, and you want to optimize it for streaming, check Web Optimized. Otherwise, leave it unchecked. If your MP4 file will need to be larger than 4 gigabytes, generally only a consideration with high definition video, check Large File Size. This will create a 64-bit MP4 file. That's necessary for any MP4 file that size or larger. Keep in mind, some devices can't play 64-bit MP4 files, and if your video, audio, and subtitles aren't more than 4 gigabytes, you don't need to use this option. However, if you don't use it and the resulting file is larger than 4 gigabytes, the result will be an unplayable file, and you'll need to start over. If you don't have automatic file naming enabled, or haven't set a default location to save your files in, you will also need to set the location and name of your file. You can get more information on Handbrake automatic output options in the first video of this series. And of course, you can always change the name and location regardless of whether it auto names and selects a location for you. To do this, click the Browse button, select the location on one of your hard drives where you'd like to save your file, and give it a name. Then click the Save button. Once your general output options are set, you can move on to cropping and resizing.